Hi, everybody. It's Elena. I saw some of you already said hello. Um, it's five o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in. And I know that there's some other people that are going to join. Um, I said to a couple of people already that I am not a super formal presenter. Um, so if you have any questions or there's something that I say that doesn't make sense or that you want to dive into deeper, interrupt me at any time. I have five kids and I'm a high school teacher, so I am totally 100% used to being interrupted <laughs> and you will not hurt my feelings. I want you guys to feel like you're getting something out of this. That's all that matters to me. So um, even if we go a completely different direction than, than what I originally um, had on the docket here, I am totally okay with that as long as you're getting what you need. Um, so welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. This is all about Edpuzzle, which is one of my, has been one of my favorites, I will say, um, as a teacher, but especially this year coming into um, hybrid teaching. So what I have, I don't know what you all have going on um, besides the craziest year ever. I'm sure all of us have the craziest year ever, but in addition to that, I um, have found myself with about, I would say 50% of my students are online 100% of the time, and then 50% of my kids are in front of me. And so we, we work on meeting both of their needs, um, giving them the same opportunities uh, in a way that doesn't make me crazy. Um, it, it's been interesting. I'm sure you've had a similar experience. And I say that because Edpuzzle has really helped me with that too. So even though I loved it before, I love it even more now. So um, I guess I'm going to start with, I'm going to share my screen here. And I have the Edpuzzle log, um, excuse me, I have the Edpuzzle um, screen up here. Let's see, where is it? Get this out of here. Even after all the Zooms we've done, I'm still not the best at Zoom. Okay, hold on just a second. Where, there we go. Okay, so I guess I'll just start by saying, do you, do you have an account for Edpuzzle? Do you guys want me to walk you through getting an account? It looked like when I asked the question on the Google form, um, it was kind of all over the place. Some people had an account, some people didn't. Some people had used it with students, some people hadn't. So um, we can go through that if you want. I think you all are in the JCISD um, realm, so you should have the ability to sign in with Google. So I'm going to actually, my husband does not have <laughs> an Unpuzzle account. So I was going to go ahead and sign him up for one right now. So that if you didn't have an account, you could see how you get one. Because I think you should have one anyways. So um, you can sign in with Google, with your Google account. Are any of you guys using Google Classroom with your students? Okay, so if you're not, it's totally okay. I'll show you how you can set up your own classes. If you are, Edpuzzle makes it really easy for you to sync your already existing Google classes with Edpuzzle. And you might have known that already. So um, I'm going to, I have a lot of Google accounts on here. All right, so I'm gonna sign in. Let's see, I'm gonna give them a password. I'll make it my name. When you do this, one thing to check for, and I'm not sure about your school, my school does not, but some schools have signed up um, with, the, with the virtual teaching happening. Some schools have actually signed up for Edpuzzle for schools, which basically just means like the premium version, they've paid for it. So you might wanna check with your admin to see if your school is that. If you are, then there's a referral code you can put in there. If you're not, you just use the basic or the free version, which I have found to be just fine. I, don't, I haven't found a need um, for anything more than that. So once you get your account, um, this is important. Even if you have, even if you have um, set up an account with Edpuzzle already, I like to point this out because if you have fellow teachers that you'd like to collaborate with, if you put in your school or organization name, it will automatically make it so that they can access your Edpuzzles and that you and vice versa, I should say. So my husband teaches at Parma Elementary, which I have already looked at this and does not have um, anybody in it, but Warner Elementary is another school in our district. Uh, Warner Elementary School. Oh, 
Oh, I spelled school wrong. That might be part of the problem. That says gardener. That could also be part of the problem. It's been a day, you guys. So it's Warner, Garner. Okay, well, this worked before you were all in the Zoom. Isn't that always the way? Western Middle School. Showing up. Okay, well, this was supposed to be a really good example for you, but it's not really turning out that way. <laughs> if you can find your school in here, what's neat is that it will um, sync you up with anybody else who's also in that school. So since Colby's not really doing me any favors with his new account here, I'm just going to log out and show you mine. So when you, okay, grade level. So you put your grade level in. He teaches ELA. Do, do, do. I'll put social studies because that's faster. I just want to get out. Okay. So when I put myself in here, there I am. Okay. So I chose Western High School, which means that anybody who's in Western High School and is using Edpuzzle, so like my friend Ruth Baca here, who's also a science teacher, or there's a lot of me. Um, my friend Jeff Messer does this too. That means you can just access their video. So it just makes it easier to collaborate. So I'm gonna back up just for a second. And I know that some of you have said that you are already using Edpuzzle with students, so you know what it is, but I just wanna make sure everybody here kind of understands the basic premise of what Edpuzzle is. So if you look, um, I use this actually with my class this week. So this is a video that I took from another teacher. It's a YouTube video that I found. And with the Edpuzzle, what I can do is take that video and this little upside down teardrop here with the number eight next to it is um, eight different student interactions. And those could be either multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, or just like a teacher note of some kind. So I could say something in here like, um, you know, she called this a double replacement reaction. We're gonna actually call them double displacement reactions. They mean the same thing. So when you're looking at the kind of thumbnail of the video, it tells you how long it is, the title of it, and how many student interactions there are. And then you can assign those to students. And what it will do is it will force them to watch the video but then it will also force them to interact with the video by answering questions or reading the notes or there's audio notes that they can listen to what you have to say by interrupting them during the video. So that's kind of the basic premise. So now that I'm in here and I'm in my Western High School content, I could take any content that's not my own and use it with my students, if that makes sense. So what I wanna do next is stop for a second. <laughs> and I just want to ask um, at this point, because there are one, two, three, just four of you in here right now. Um, how, would you like to go through um, making one of these videos? Is Do you feel like that would be helpful for you? Have you already done um, or have you gone through the process of making one of these videos? How in depth do you want me to go with this? Tina shaking her head no. <laughs> Does that mean no, don't teach me how to do it? No, I have I have never done one before, okay. nor do I know how. <laughs> so I just I I team with teachers that use this a lot. Okay. And um, I team with one teacher that um, that won't allow me access to get to get get to her her videos in order to paste them onto my students' school okay. account. So um, CJ came out and he showed me how, he showed me the Western High School, like that area there, real right, quick, right. a quickie, quickie, how I could get on there and see her videos. Um, so I, that's, it, that's all I know. Okay. <laughs> so would it be beneficial for you to look at like how you would make your own? Or are you more interested yes. in, okay. Um, 
Is that true for like the rest of you too? I can do a quick overview. And then if you need more information, I'll show you, I think you can always talk to me too, um, or CJ. Um, one thing that I like to do, so I'll start with this like kind of two pronged approach. So um, one thing that I love to do is when I, when you're in the home page or the content page, either one, just like when you first come into Edpuzzle, um, I will think about, so like, Coming up with my chemistry students, we're gonna be studying um, decomposition reactions. So one thing that takes a really big load off of my plate is to use something that another teacher has already made, provided it's a good resource, right? So there's no use in me reinventing the wheel necessarily if there's a good resource out there that a teacher has already created. So Edpuzzle is great for that. So if you just go up to, search content, and maybe we should do something for one of you all. What's coming up? Because I know chemistry, but what, what about for one of you? What's coming up that you might be teaching your students sometime soon? Um, I am a fourth grade teacher, and I also teach science. Okay. We are currently teaching plant adaptations. Okay. So one thing that you can do is just up in the search bar, is look for whatever's coming up or whatever you think might be a good video for your students to watch. And the first thing that's gonna come up is stuff from the Edpuzzle community, meaning it's gonna be a teacher. So you have that kind of layer of filter already, a teacher has used it. And it's going to also have whatever interactions that that teacher has deemed appropriate or useful with their students. So I think that this is a great place to start because it gives you a head start, so to speak. So like, here's one that's three minutes and three seconds long with 10 questions or notes in it. Um, so you could take a look at this. If you click on it, it's gonna open up and it's gonna show you all of the interactions over here under video events. So you're gonna see, okay, she's got a bunch of multiple choice questions in here that are answered and here's where they're at. Um, you can play the video all three minutes if you want and it will stop. Or if you're like, yeah, I'm familiar with this video. I just wanna see what the questions are. You can click on the actual interaction. Sorry for the loudness there. And it will show you what the multiple choice question is. So you can get kind of a sense of, is this a video that's, you know, like I can just use it as is? Would I wanna just tweak it a little bit? Um, or is it just kind of garbage and I, I don't want to? So I like to kind of start there. And then if it's something that you want to edit, then if you're like, yeah, this is good, I really like this, then you can go back to the video and you can click on it. And when you click on edit, you make it your own. So when you edit it, the first thing it's gonna ask for you to do is to cut. And I will be very honest with you, I have very rarely cut a video. Um, the only time I've cut a video is if I find it like myself on YouTube and it's like just, really way too long and I just want them to watch like a small portion of it. But generally speaking, when it's coming from teachers, like they know the good stuff already. So I'm not finding myself having to cut it, but it's pretty easy to do. You just kind of like shift. Winter masks the stress. You just shift the bar left and right in order to make it, to make it shorter. Um, there's some other options up here. I'm pointing like you can see me. There's some other <laughs> options up here at the top. The voiceover is interesting. I've only done that a couple of times and they've changed the policy on that. Just FYI. Um, I haven't found it super useful. This would be like if there's a video that the teacher is narrating, but you don't like their narration. So you want to just talk over like all of it. So you would voice over it. But with YouTube, they don't let you do that anymore. So if it's a YouTube video, you can't use the voiceover anyways. Sometimes that was good when I liked, like for example, if this was showing a process and I just wanted to talk my students through it. But most of the time the video does a great job anyways. So I wasn't using that. But the questions tab is the one that I found really good. And this would be where if you liked this question, um, this multiple choice question here, see if it's I'm so I'm using my phone's hotspot right now because I unexpectedly had to do a gymnastics room tonight so my internet is not the best and so far it's been cooperating but um 
Show me this. Show me this multiple choice question. Chlorophyll breaks down. The color of leaves begins to change. Deciduous each year and remain inactive until spring. I'm trying to get it. To kind yeah. of like bears in hibernation. Okay, well, since it's not cooperating, I'll stop it there. If you wanted to put your own question there in addition to what they have, this would be where you come over and you just click on one of these three things. So you can ask a multiple choice question where you just type it in and you put as many answers as you want. You can put in pictures for the answers, which I love. Um, you choose which one is right. Like, is this beautiful? I cannot type today. So yes, no. And what I like about this too, is if you have time for it, you can give them feedback. Like, remember to balance your equation. So when they get it wrong, they can see. So these objective type questions will go ahead and get graded automatically as the students are watching the videos. If you do an open-ended question, then you will see all of their answers and you can grade them after the fact. But I like to just put them in there just to make them think about things sometimes and give me their feedback. I don't necessarily always grade them. And then the note, I think, is kind of the, um, I don't know what the right word is. It's, it's more valuable than it seems at first. So a lot of times when I'm doing like even my own notes and I misspeak or I use the wrong term or there's another way or it's another teacher's video and it's just a different term that we would use, I just stop and write them a little note. Like we also call this a um, single displacement. There's my typing again. Just so that they stop and see, okay, they said double replacement, we're gonna call it double displacement or whatever it is. So all of these little teardrops are those interactions and if there's one you don't like, if I can actually get this to do what it's supposed to do. If you don't like that, you can edit the ones that already exist. Maybe I can do it this way. If I click on it over here. It's just spinning. I'm sorry that I can't get it to work with my internet, but if you click on one of these teardrops that already exists, maybe I'll get it to work in another video, then what comes up is like she's saying or he's saying, whoever's video this is, why can coniferous trees immediately start making food when springtime comes? If you're like, yeah, I don't like that question, it will give you the option to just delete it or you can change it the wording of it, or you can change the answers of it too. So you can really customize it to be what you want. So I know that was kind of a quick overview um, and this wasn't really cooperating a whole ton, but um, it, it's pretty intuitive once you, once you put a few questions in there. And then you can move these questions around if it's not quite where you want it in the right spot. And then when you're done, this is all saved as you go. Um, so when you're done, you can finish, but you can always go back and edit it later too. So now it's mine. If you look up here now, Alina Sharp's video is adaptation video. Um, so I can go back and I can edit it more if I need to later. Um, or I can go and assign it to my classes. And this is where, um, let me back up just a second. So 383 other teachers have done a video similar to this. So if you're like, man, eh, that one wasn't so great, but I like the video, you could always check some of these other teachers who have done the same thing, just maybe with different questions. Okay, so I just wanna see if this will let me, it's still not working, okay. This is where when you assign it, um, if you're using Google Classroom, which I think you, a few of you said you were, Right, a couple of you? Okay, some no, some yes. Um, this year for us, we're not allowed to. We're supposed to use Schoology. So if you're like me and you use Schoology, what you would probably wanna do, in my opinion, is to add a class, which is right here. It's really easy and you just have to do it once. So if you add a class, you just do the name of it. Like maybe it's your, you know, your morning group or just your whole class, you know, Miss So-and-So's classroom. 
Um, I will. I don't know why I said flex. I think because I was working on that earlier. So let's, I'll call this my fake class, um, 11th grade chemistry. And then open class is going to just be um, exactly what it sounds like. Kids just get in. It's kind of a one and done thing. If it's something that you think you're going to use and you're going to want data back from, I would recommend the classic because then when students log in, you'll be able to see how they did, what they answered, how long they spent on it, that kind of thing. So I like classic. So you go ahead and create that class and then you would just assign that video to the fake class. If it's Google Classroom, up here, I'm gonna go back to the homepage here. Up here where it says my classes, you can add a class from here as well. And if you click on the plus sign, it says connect LMS classes. Unfortunately, the only LMS that works really well with Edpuzzle is Google Classroom, just like a lot of other EdTech tools. Um, so if you click on Google Classroom, because you've signed in with your Google account, it will bring up all of your Google classes for you. So those of you who are using Google Classroom, you just click the one or the ones that you want to connect to Edpuzzle and just get them set up. So oh, I'll say 10th grade and chemistry. And then it will actually take that class and bring it into your Edpuzzle for you. So then when you go back to assign that video, so here's our adaptation plant, or excuse me, adaptation video plant adaptation. So once it's ready to go, either in that page when I click it, make it big, or on that other class, I can assign it. And so these are my little, my Google Classroom icons. I can assign it to those, or I can assign it to the class that I made up in Ed puzzle, either one. It works for both of them. Um, now, because I don't have anybody enrolled in my fake class yet, it's just going to default to assign it to everyone. But I will click on my seventh hour. And like I said, I use this really regularly with my students. Um, you can actually assign it manually to only certain students if you want. So what I have done with my students is for my seventh hour is they all entered the class the first week of the quarter and now they are all in there. So no matter what I assign when they get into Edpuzzle, if there's a video that I've assigned to them, they see it and they get a notification because um, with the iPad app, it will push them a notification if there's a video that they need to watch. So you can decide when you want that video to appear in their app or in their account. So if you wanted it to be today, great. If you wanted to wait, like I know I'm going to do this on Friday when I have a sub, put it for Friday. If you want to give it a due date, you can do that and you can give it a time that you want it done. And here's where things get a little bit interesting and it depends on your age level. So prevent skipping is going to default to on. And what that means is that students aren't gonna be able to scrub ahead on the video. So they're not gonna be able to be like, yeah, this video is 15 minutes long. So I'm just gonna like move that little button all the way up until it's 14 minutes and 30 seconds and then I'll call it done. If you turn this on, they won't be able to do that. But there's a kind of a, it's a double-edged sword what I found with my students. Um, I teach high school chemistry. So a lot of times what they're learning, they wanna actually stop and go back and hear it again and have time to write it down. Um, so with prevent skipping, they can't do that. If they do that, they have to start all the way over at the beginning. So that is not such a great thing. So you might want to turn this on, you might not. But what I have found myself doing with my high school students is that I, I'm actually turning it off so that they have that option to go back and rewatch a portion if they want to without having to start all the way over. And I'll show you... Um, how I still keep them accountable here in a second with that. And then if the if it's YouTube, especially if you're pulling a video from YouTube, you can turn on closed captioning, which I know really helps some of my students understand. If it's a Google class and you click on the post on Google Classroom, it will post it as an assignment on Google Classroom for you as well. So you don't have to go and tell them on Google Classroom that there's an assignment on Edpuzzle. They're just gonna see that automatically, which is really, really nice. 
If you're Schoology like me or a different learning management system, this wouldn't, this won't be an option. You'll have to go in, like I don't, what are the rest of you using if you're not using Google, are you using anything? I know some of you are elementary, so you might not be using a learning management system. We use Schoology. Okay. Yeah. Like, so for Schoology, I just go into like my, yeah, I go into like my daily agenda and I just say, log into Edpuzzle. There's a video called whatever the title is waiting for you. Please watch it. Um, as opposed to like Google Classroom, which takes that step away. It just automatically posts it for you, which is kind of nice. Um, okay. I want to take a breath there for a second. Do you guys have any questions about that so far? Did I go too fast through anything or did you have questions about any of that? So Lena, there's not a link or anything that we can put on to Schoology that the kids yep. Yes, there is a link that you can put on Schoology. So let me go back to go back to this. So when you assign this, once you assign it. Do, 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 do. Let's just say it's my, my fifth hour is going to be like, what the heck, but I'll go ahead and assign it. Um, once you assign it, here it is. Here's all my fifth hour students that were a part of that class. Mm -hmm. um, then I can share that assignment. So it will be there. So if you just say in Schoology, go to Add Puzzle, look for the video adaptation, video plan adaptations they should be able to just open up Edpuzzle and it'll be the first thing that they see. But if you wanted to say, here's a link, if you click on share, then you can share the link. You could also share the link in Schoology, either, either one. Since I have high school students, like I don't give them this link, I just say, go ahead and get in there. But you could give them a direct link right here, just copy it and mm -hmm. put it in to your, what if you do a page or an, an update or whatever you do in Schoology. Okay, so while we're on the same topic, let me show you. So it looks like since I just assigned this, right? Watched, nobody's watched any of this, 0%. And then it tells you the grade would be how many questions they got correct out of the objective questions. So it won't include your open-ended questions, but any multiple choice questions you have, it'll tell you how many they got right here. The last time they got on, and if they turned it in or not. So I'll just show you guys an example too. So this grade book tab is all of the ones that I've assigned. So um, this one I just did. So here's Jameson. She spent 26 minutes total. That includes both videos. But if I click on just these notes. So this is these. this was my sub plans for Monday. I was out for a PD. And so I assigned this for sub plans. So for this, she got every question right, which is not super hard because I only asked one. I only had one question here at the end, but she got it right. It also tells you how much of the video she watched and how much time she spent on it. So that's how I, I like for me personally with my high school students, when I turn off that, um, skipping option like if I let them skip I can still see how long it took them to watch the video and she spent 13 minutes which is how long the video was so she's good um, and you can do that for all of your students so you do get a nice analysis um, I use it a lot more for like formative just to see how they're doing um, so when like Elizabeth Baxter which is you know, ironically, the person that I was supposed to be emailing, <laughs> Elizabeth Fleming, um, <laughs> uh, she didn't watch any of it. So when she's asking me questions about this, I can just say, well, I don't think you watched the notes on this yet. So um, why don't we do that first? Um, but I usually just do that to get a sense of how students did. And oh, one thing that I wanted to mention here, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little jumpy, like jumping around a little bit. When you go to my classes, and this is my fifth hour, and you go to class members, one thing being a, like having the hybrid model is I had to get students into that classroom. If it's not, if you're not a Google Classroom person, there's a code. So here's the class code right here. 
And so you have to have students at least initially join the class using the class code. So one thing that I had a problem with my high schoolers is that a lot of them joined the right, the wrong class. So that's why it looked like so many of them didn't do the assignment is because I have a lot of people in here that aren't actually in fifth hour. So you can, it, once you get that sorted out, it's all good. But here's your class code or when you invite students over here in the blue, you can send them a link as well to get them to join your class. And again, once you do that, once they've joined the class, then you don't have to reshare the link for every video. It should just appear in their account. Or you can share the link every time if you want. Um, okay, so I wanna, again, I wanna stop there and make sure that you don't have any questions or I'm making, I'm making sense, I'm not babbling. <laughs> A lot of times it makes sense in my head, but it doesn't make sense when it comes out. <laughs> Are there any questions you can think of so far? So is there an option to have the questions read? There is not. You could read the question yourself if you wanted to. So um, if I wanted, I'll take my own video this time because, oh, actually that says Jeff Messer. That's funny. Um, if I wanted to edit this and add a question, so let's say, right, uh, same as the formula on the left-hand side. So I get right ABC. there, I want to ask a question. Um, if I wanted to do a multiple choice question, um, yeah, you can't, the question can't be read as a question, so I apologize. I was smushing through two things together. But you can do an audio note with this little um, microphone. So what you could do is record the audio note where you read the question and then follow it right up after that with the question, if that makes sense. So, so there'd that, be two dots. There'd be two dots there. There'd be the audio note and then there would be yeah. the written question. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm just thinking for adaptation for my yep. kids who can't read the yep. uh, regular ed stuff. Yep. Yep. So there's no, I mean, that's the best you can do. It, that, it's a great suggestion because I totally, I totally get where you're coming from. But, um, and I thought for some reason that you could do that in the question, but you could do the audio note and then follow that right up with the question if you wanted to, but that's probably the best you could do. Okay. The other question I had was, could you take a video that you've made like on Loom and put onto this? Yep, absolutely. So I'm so glad you asked that because I was going to go back to content next. Um, before I do that and answer that question, is there anything else you guys can think of as far as kind of like the nuts and bolts of making a video? Okay, so back in Edpuzzle, so again, I talked about the first prong of this was using something that another teacher has made. And um, you can also, one step kind of down from that is that you can search um, YouTube, Khan Academy, all of these channels over here for just like videos that teachers have not put any interactions with yet. Um, so you can be like, okay, well, I want a Khan Academy video on significant figures. And what that's gonna do is just give you like a clean start. So like, here's the clean video that you can use and then add your own questions. So that's kind of like a step down. So there's nothing there that any teachers have added yet. You can decide, and I'll be honest with you, I do a lot of videos on Edpuzzle where I don't put any questions. I just wanna know that they've watched it um, so that I can make sure that they've seen it before I move on to the next thing. So you know, you can really use it without any interactions if you want to. Um, engagement is great, but if you're just trying to like get the, get it into their hands or get it on, onto their screens, then that works too. If you wanna do your own video, so when you go to your, the home screen for your content, um, so all of these up here, Oh, that's science in my school. Where's mine? Oh, my content, duh. <laughs> so this is all the content that I have either taken from another teacher and spun it to be my own. Like here's the one we just did. 
um, or stuff that I have uploaded myself. And I'm not a super organized person. You guys are probably more organized than me. So I just let them all like, I just like let them all sit there. But if you want to, I made one folder just for you. You can put them in a folder. So like these notes right here, if I click on that little link, I can move them to a folder so you can make things nice and organized. So if you wanted to put things in folders so that you can find them later and it's a little bit cleaner, you can. Now to answer your question about making your own videos from Loom, you absolutely, you sure can. So you would go to this under my content, we go to add content, and we'll start with just um, create a video is going to be what we were just talking about. So create a video would be like finding a YouTube video or finding a Khan Academy video and starting from there. Uploading a video would mean taking like your video from Loom, which I love Loom. I wish I would have offered to do a session on Loom. But if you made any kind of video using QuickTime or Doceri or Loom or whatever you have, if it's your own video, you can upload it from Google Drive or from somewhere on your computer. So I'll, I think I have some videos on here. Oh yeah, okay. So, um, so this is a video of me trying to get kids to take advanced chemistry next year. <laughs> so this is on my desktop. I made it using QuickTime and you just upload it. And it does take a little bit to get it processed, but it will go ahead and it will upload your video and then it will treat it like any other video that's a YouTube video or a Khan Academy video, but it's just, it's yours. So you can insert your questions in there just like any other video. Okay, so my Loom videos right now are saved on my Loom, my yep. Loom area. <laughs> yep. So I have to take my Loom video and put it on my desktop. Yeah, and that's not as hard. I just it's not as it pretty. over and put it on. Is that how I do that? Yeah, so here's my loom, um, which again I love. And so if you're gonna do a loom video, sorry, it's taken a second. Um, so here is okay, so here's me going through my mm. um, advanced chemistry test that I gave them the other day. And you can, sorry, it's so slow. Up here where it says copy video link, if you do the little drop down arrow, oh, just kidding. Maybe it's the little, there it is, the little triple button, wrong okay. button. You just download it and it will download to your desktop. It's going to take forever in a day. So I'm probably not going to let it do the whole thing. So it'll go down to your desktop and then you'll just do the same thing. So when you go to, um, your ad puzzle once that loom is on your desktop then you would just pick it from so you would choose it from your desktop so it end up here on your desktop now again i have a mac so yours might look a little bit different but once you download that loom video you can grab it and re-upload it to your ad puzzle does, does that make sense actually loom might I thought maybe with Loom, you could just put it onto your Google Drive, but no, I'm not seeing that. So I'm, I'm probably, oh, you know what it is? Screencastify does that, not Loom. Anyways, so you can do it, yes. And I've done that before with my Loom videos. It works very well. Did they answer your question okay? And you can see I'm still at only 9% here. So like, give yourself some time if you're gonna upload a video. That one was kind of long though too. Okay, so how are we doing so far? Is that okay? We doing okay? All right, so we are, it's a 540, so I wanted to show you just a couple of like the non-obvious things you can do with Loom that I've really, really enjoyed. And the first thing is um, it's a great way that you can easily differentiate content for your students. And differentiation is so hard, especially right now. I don't know about you guys, but I have students who are all over the place. I have students who it's like I can't even get them I don't know if they're, they're black rectangles on Zoom. I don't know if they're hearing me. It sure doesn't look like they know much. They're not turning anything in. So like they're, I, I don't know how to help them. They're riding the struggle bus. Love them, but they're riding the struggle bus. And then I have students who I said it once and they understood it. So differentiating right now for me has been harder than ever 
but Edpuzzle has actually kind of been a blessing in that because what I can do is if I find like, let's say my students who um, they're sitting in front of me in class and I know they're understanding it and they're ready to move on. So I can look up um, the next thing maybe that they, that we could go into or something that's more in depth that I wouldn't expect the rest of my students to do. So maybe they are doing, um, I want them to do stoichiometry of like stoichiometry, let me spell that, <laughs> of limiting reactants. Oh, that's my content. Let me, sorry, I'm in the wrong spot. Home. So this is a tricky thing that I would definitely not assign to all of my students, but I might want those ones that are really getting it to be able to move on and not have to hear me explain what they already know, like again. So if I choose this one and I know I this guy here is great. So I'm just gonna pick that and I'm gonna assign it. I'm gonna edit it. And I'm not gonna go through all these steps. But when I assign it and I click on my first hour chemistry, I can differentiate super easily by just choosing those students to whom that would apply. So like if I know um, Michaela is, she's fine and Carter is good and Bryn is good and Colin is good and I'm just doing this totally randomly and they're ready to move on. Then I just pick those ones and I assign it to just those students and the other ones will never know. So when I say go check your ad puzzle and do the video that's there, I could have this video for the ones that are ready to move on. I could maybe have another video that is a reteach of what we're doing for the ones who are kind of struggling. Um, so it, it's a really, really nice way to be able to differentiate without having to give a lot of complicated directions. So you set it up, they just go into Edpuzzle, they see the video that's there and they do it, no questions asked. They don't, they don't realize that they're watching a video that's much more difficult or easier content than the person who's next to them is watching or the person at home is watching. So I really, really like that. Um, and again, as long as you have students in your class, you can do that. If you don't have students in your class yet, like my fake class, I couldn't, I couldn't do that for them. All right. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, home, content, home. My content. I always lose where I'm supposed to go. My content. Okay. <laughs> um, if you go to add content, so create a video was like the uh, YouTube videos, Khan Academy videos, videos that already exist. Upload a video would be one of your videos that exists on your computer or your Google Drive somewhere. The student project is another one that I really like for um, kind of extending this idea. So beyond it just being like I show students videos with questions in them, because that's basically what Ed Puzzle is. But you can take it another step further with the student project. I've only done this a couple times, but has been awesome. It is a great way. Well, here, I'll just show you. So a student project kind of flips it so that the students have to create the Ed Puzzle and you get to watch it. So if you said, all right, adaptations, let's say, and you can't see it very well in here, but it says, e.g., find a video that synthesizes the last lesson. So maybe for plant adapt adaptations, you don't want them to really synthesize the lesson. You want them to find a video of a plant with an adaptation for defense against predators. So they go out, they search YouTube, and again, this kind of depends on <laughs> your level. Like my, um, my fifth grader at Western would not be able to do this because she's not able to search YouTube. But since it's an Ed Puzzle, she would be able to use um, uh, the National Grid 
excuse me, the National Geographic Channel or the Veritasium Channel, which is a science channel. So it gives them the opportunity to search those instead. So it's not just like YouTube is blocked. Um, but for my high schoolers, YouTube is wide open. They could use whatever video they wanted to. So you could give them instructions for what you wanted them to go and find or you could tell them the goal and then the instructions would be, what do you want them to put in there? So real light again in here, it says a good project should have questions and audio notes. Okay, so maybe you want them to have include at least three multiple choice questions and one typed note. So we kind of give them the parameters for the project. So I love this because for me as a high school teacher, this is like one class hour. So we learned this, now here's your assignment, go. I want this done by the end of the hour. And it's, it's been really awesome what they come up with. So then when you save that project, it becomes just like a video in terms of assigning it. So it's gonna be under your content again, but you scroll. So here's my video content, doo -doo -doo. here are my projects. So I have made three projects. There's my adaptations project that I just made. So I click on that. And then just like the video, you assign it. And you assign it. And again, this could be an opportunity to differentiate. Um, I have done this. It's been so cool. So like my students who are doing really well, then I make them make a video where they're explaining and doing the reteaching. And then I can use that video with my students who are struggling. And it's amazing because when they hear it from up here, um, sometimes that makes all the difference. They're just not hearing it from me. Um, hearing it from up here makes a big difference. So you can assign it to everybody. This is a class project, everyone's doing it, or you can assign it to individual students, whichever one you want. Make your, make your um, availability when you want them to see it and when you want it to be due. Um, Again, I think I'm going to get some emails after the session from students, but then when you assign it, it's going to be the same kind of thing. They're going to see it pop up um, in their app as something that they need to do, or you can come over here and you can share the assignment as a link and post it on your Schoology page. If it's a Google Classroom, you'll have the option to post it to Google Classroom. And then when they get their project done, it will show up right here. And I'm sorry, I don't have any for you. I got rid of all the ones that were done. That was silly, I should not have done that. But you'll see their project here. You can watch their video, you can engage in it. Um, you can see if they've turned it in and it has it's, it's been a it's been a pretty fun thing like they the high schoolers dig it at least the ones that we've done so far so that's been pretty cool oh yeah there's also sorry um there's also um i said national Ge geographic and veritasium but there's also number file the crash courses so again if your school limits youtube there's lots of other options one thing that i wanted to mention about youtube um again, jumping around, but if you don't want to just, like, if you have that YouTube video that you know you like, and you're searching for it here, and there's going to be like a million videos, and you're like, crap, where is it? Um, if you know the link for it, like, I have a Google Doc that I keep um, this is not a good example, <laughs> but as I am, like, especially this year, like here's, here's my notes for types of reactions um, on YouTube, then instead of searching for that in the Edpuzzle tool, um, you can just copy and paste that link and it'll bring it right up instead of having to search and search and search for it. So just copy and paste that link if you have it somewhere, like you're keeping lesson plans somewhere and you have the link you can, or from like last year's Schoology page, you can just copy it into the YouTube bar and it'll bring it right up. So that's really nice. Okay, so it is 5.50. At this point, um, I would like to make sure that you have all of the information that you need to move forward. So what questions do you have or what are some things you're thinking? Is there anything you know you'd like to use this with or anything that you'd like to know more about before, um, before you move on and maybe try it with your students?
You guys are acting like my first hour chemistry class right now. <laughs> they just stare at me and they're like, really lady, come on. So uh, real quick, I might've missed this, but when you search YouTube up here, like adaptations, like I did weather, yeah. time, that's our next science. Um, uh, what we're doing next in science. And sure. Sure. Um, so yeah, a lot of them come up. Is there any way to search, I guess, for like specifically third grade or is it just a random pulls everything up of weather and climate? When you, it, it does an okay job if you go to your account when you sign in and sorry, my Zoom is in the way here. If you are, um, where is it? Settings, I think maybe, nope. Profile, maybe? Somewhere in here, school. There we go. If you are particular about your grade level, it does an okay job of semi-filtering those out when you search, but it's not perfect. Okay, I did put in third grade general ed, so. Okay. I'll have to browse. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, or um, if you know what I do, I very rarely search here. Um, I, I would more likely just go to like Google and search like weather and climate for high school chemistry or whatever it is like chemistry, single replacement reaction. So like, kind of like this, um, like actually in Google, do, do, do. I find a lot more success this way. Chemistry, single replacement reactions high school and then do videos and then that kind of narrows it down and then I just take that um I don't know why I did that then I take the link and post it or search for an odd puzzle rather does that make sense yeah so just copy the link up here and of the yeah like, click on okay. yeah so if it's like okay um I put high school in there. So if it's not immediate in Edpuzzle, then this kind of narrows it down a little bit more. Then when you find the video you want, here's the link for it. You can just copy it. Then in Edpuzzle when you're this searching- This is the checkers oh, game where grandson and sorry. granddad will bump. <laughs> in Edpuzzle, oh my goodness, I'm jumping all over the place here. Now I'm on Loom, okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, now we're in the right spot. So if I just put that link right, in, like I didn't even press enter. As soon as it goes in there, it brings up that video. Okay. So that's another way you can get around it. So you can just browse. The other thing to mention too, is if you, were, if you have your teachers um, work together and have them make sure that they are also on the same school, so that my teaching partner and I do this all the time where he's made the video. So I just go into Western high school and then I can get his video from, from our school page. You can do that without it too. Like if I wanted him to have this, um, you can share a preview and that's going to bring up a video or excuse me, a link that will let you share it like via an email. So if you like, like, hey, Mr. Messer, this is the video I'm using with my students tomorrow, you can do it that way too. Okay. So I'm sorry that went off track from your question, but. No, you're fine. <laughs> what else? Get out of there. If you don't want people to use it, is there a way to turn that off? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I, private. yep. When you go into your video, um, there's a setting right here where it says public and you can okay. make it private. Yep. That's right. Yep, yep. Yep. So if you just want it to be for you and your students, you can totally do that. Um, what else? Where is 
I did want to show you, and I know we're at 555. Um, when you invite teachers, so I guess that's two more things. When you are on a free account, you have limited space. So you will eventually get to a point if you really like using Adpuzzle where you'll have too many videos or too many projects. And I'm the type of person where like, I'm totally fine with that. I don't ever spend more than about, I would say not including like if I make my own video, so not including that time, but like adding the questions and editing it, like I never spend about more than 15 minutes on that part of it. So I'm okay with just saying, you know what? Like this has got to go. So I'm going to delete this and free up some space on my account. So if you find yourself running out of space, you can either get rid of some videos that you're like, that will be easy to remake. Or I didn't really like that one that much anyways. I'll do a different one next year. Or it only took me five minutes, so I'll make it again next year. No big deal. Another way that you can get more space is by inviting other teachers, even from your own building. So if there's teachers that you're like co-teaching with or anybody from your school that you think would be interested in using it, just by inviting them, you can get more space. So that's really cool. And then if they join like your school, then you guys can use each other's videos, which is really great. The other thing I wanted to mention is that on their resources page, this is really easy to overlook, but their resources are phenomenal. So they have a really good, come on, come on. Um, they have a very good set of tutorials. So if you're like, you know what, Elena, you flew through that so fast. I have no, I still don't even know how to make a video. Um, first of all, I, I'm very sorry if that's the case. So, and I feel free to reach out to me afterwards. We can do step by step if you want to go through making a video. But also, they have a ton of tutorials that walk you through how to share a video, how to add a question to a video, how to create a class, how to invite your students to join it, all that good stuff. These are very, very good. Um, they also have webinars where they get a little bit more in depth. Um, my favorite thing on here though, is if you scroll all the way down to the bottom to the community where it says blog. So again, it's really easy to miss, but their blog is really good. They have a ton of super good ideas on the blog. Um, there was a chemistry one on here, the other, or this one right here, um, where I was just like, oh my gosh, that is genius. So it was talking about how to take labs that you would do and put them on Edpuzzle and I tried it and it worked out really, really well. So they have um, a really good set of just ideas to get you thinking about doing things differently. Um, they have some ready made resources to use. So the blog is a really cool thing to check out as well. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that.